What's up guys? Welcome to the second episode of Planet Side. And today we're going to be looking at a shockwave effect that I made a while back. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at displacement maps, a butterfly animation, and chromatic aberration is the discoloration in the video that you see here. Now we're going to do a lot of tips and tricks today. So uh, pay attention, follow along, and uh, I hope you enjoy. Guys, we're in After Effects. First thing we're going to do is import our pictures. Two pictures here. And we're going to take our picture and we're going to drop it into a new composition. Now we're going to select the layer, go to Edit, Duplicate. We're going to name the bottom layer BG for background. And we're going to turn it off. And we're going to double click on our top layer and grab the Roto Brush tool. Now we're going to start painting out our subject. Just click the paint. Alright, perfect. Now let's go back to our main composition. And you can see our background is gone. What we're going to do is we're going to feather the edges just ever so slightly. Maybe something like, let's say 15. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to turn our background on. What we're going to do is we're going to go to Layer, Precompose, our top layer selected. We're going to rename this Subject. Click on Move All Attributes. We're going to right click, go to Time, Freeze Frame. Alright, close that up. Get an orange color so we can see it better. Now we're going to double click on our background layer and grab the Clone Stamps tool. Uh, and we're going to remove our subject from the background by painting them out. So if you hold down Alt and click on an empty space, you can see we can start cloning in the background over our subject. So just Alt click and uh, select a green spot or somewhere where our subject isn't and we're going to start painting them out Alright, cool. Let's go back to our main composition. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to Layer, Precompose, call this background BG, move all the attributes, and click OK. Uh, purple color. Now we're going to go to Layer, Solid, call the solid Radio Waves, Radio Waves, we're going to
going to come over to our effects and presets. If you can't find your effects and presets, you can go to window and it should be right there. So let's type in radio waves and double click to add it to our layer. If we scrub through, you can see where we get these radio waves. And what we're going to do for this layer is we're going to select it, go to layer, precompose, and call this radio waves and click OK, move all the attributes, remember, give it a green color just so we know, double click on it, and we're going to start messing with some settings here. Now, let's go back to our previous main layer and select our subject layer and go to Edit, Copy, go to Radio Waves layer, go to Edit, Paste. What we're basically going to do is we're going to extract a mask from our subject layer. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to Layer, auto trace if you have apply new layer just uncheck that and press ok now if we turn on our mask you can see we have a mask of our subject layer I'm gonna go down select the mask and go to edit copy select our radio waves layer and go to edit paste. So we're going to select our subject layer and delete that. Then we're going to grab our radio waves layer and we're going to go to wave type, change that to mask. Come down to mask and turn that to mask one. And Delete this keyframe here. Let's try that again. Going to go to wave type, change that to mask, change that to mask one. Now, if you play, you can see that our waves have taken the form of our subject. So let's uh, mess with a few of these settings here. and lessen the frequency let's say about 80 and the expansion can put that to right about here let's go to our start with and increase that and I'm gonna go to the profile and change it to sawtooth in which you can see that the inside of the mask is feathered so it's a little softer so we don't want a harsh a harsh mask so let's increase our start width like here but I'm going to change the color to a yellowish orange color there we go it's looking pretty good let's just decrease the expansion here I'm just trying to get the right amount of bands going. I think that's 
gonna work. All right, let's go into our effects and presets and type in fast blur. Apply that to our radio waves layer. Click on repeat edges. Then we're gonna blur this out. Something like 19 or 20. It's looking pretty good. Close this, select it, go to the layer, pre-compose, and call this radio waves blur. Press OK. Let's change the color to orange. I'm gonna duplicate it. If you hit Control D you can duplicate. We put a fast blur for the top layer. I'm going to change the top layer to add. So let's blur this out a lot. So what we're essentially doing is we're creating this haziness effect. So uh, let's change this to add as well. It's looking pretty good might even yes I think this is good let's go back to our main comp let's take a look let's put it below our subject layer as you can see we have this nice radio wave effect let's go back and decrease the amount let's say about 99 and let's decrease it just a little because we don't want to lose too much detail still want to maintain some so let's go back see how that looks all right looking pretty good let's change the transfer mode to add that's perfect I'm going to go to our background layer. I'm going to go to effects and presets and type in displacement map. And apply that to our layer, our background layer. Let's change it to radio waves. As you can see, nothing's happening right now. But if we increase displacement height, you can see. We're getting this nice displacement effect happening. So let's increase this some more, like maybe 30. Let's give that a look. All right. As you can see down here, the displacement map is uh, getting rid of some of our background. Now to fix that, all we have to do is duplicate our background, put it on the bottom, Let's rename this background to, put it on the bottom, delete the displacement map, and just move it. And you can see uh, it's fixed. Alright, this is looking pretty good. Now as you can see that the edges are a little misshapen. So what we're going to do to sell the effect better is we're going to put a drop shadow for our subject layer. Just so it blends better. Let's increase the distance here. Increase the softness just so we get some variation. All right, let's go back to our project and select this butterfly image 
and drag that onto our composition. We're going to scale it down. If you hold down Control Alt F, it jumps. If you hold down Shift, you can scale it up and down. So we're going to leave it at this. We're going to rename this layer Butterfly. Butterfly, oops. We're going to go to layer, pre-compose, cause butterfly, click OK. I'm going to get this a pink color. I'm going to double click on our butterfly layer and we're going to scale it up just so we can see a little bit better. And what we're going to do is we're going to separate the wings from the torso. So if we rename this layer torso, we can duplicate it. Call this one left wing. Grab our pen tool. we can start masking out the wing. Let's beat this up. Just like that. Turn off our torso layer just so we can see what we're doing. We're going to hit M on the keyboard, select our mask, go to edit, copy, Select our torso layer, go to edit, paste. Let's turn off our left wing, turn on our torso, hit M, and change it to subtract. So now we're just left with the torso and the left wing gone. So let's duplicate this, rename it right wing. Delete the mask, grab our pen tool, you can just hit G on the keyboard if you want to grab your pen tool, and start masking out the right wing. And change that, we're going to go select the mask, go to edit, copy, grab the torso, go to edit, paste, and set it to subtract. So now we're just left with the torso. Let's close these up, turn them back on. We're going to select the left wing, and we're going to grab our pan behind tool, and move the anchor point a little bit to the center. Grab the right wing and do the same thing. As you can see, we have this line that our mask has created. So we have to fix that. So let's just readjust our mask just a little. Just readjusting. I'm gonna Grab the adjusted mask, control C, delete the first one, and then paste it again, put it to subtract. Okay. You can see we still have this line. To get rid of that, all we have to do is go select both layers and press F. And then feather feather each mask just ever so slightly. I think let's see. And go down, press MM and go down to mask expansion and just increase the mask expansion. I'm gonna do that for the left wing as well. For 
1540 expansion. As you can see, our line is gone. Now, if you want to make these wings flap, we're going to have to make them 3D. To do that, toggle your switch and select the 3D icon. And as you can see, if we hit W or R on your keyboard, it brings up our rotation. You can see that we can rotate it on a Y axis. But we're going to use a different method to animate this. So select the null object, rename it wing control. Go to your effects and presets, type in slider control, and apply that to the wing control. We're going to rename this wing control. Boy. And then we're going to come down to the effects and look for the slider widget. When we have that selected, we can press R on our keyboard to bring up the rotation from the wings. Alt click on the Y rotation and pick whip it to the slider. We're going to do the same for the left wing. Alt click on the Y rotation pick whip to slider. Now if we increase the sliders value you can see that we're getting this Y rotation. But the only problem is the left wing is not moving in the right direction. So to fix that let's select our expression type in star negative one star basically means it's going to multiply by negative one so if we hit the slider control now you can see that the left wing is inverted so now to animate this we're going to use an expression we're going to alt click on the slider type in wiggle parentheses 33 comma say 45 close parentheses then click away now if we hit play you can see that our wings are flapping perfect now we can use this animation in our main comp so Let's close these up, close everything up, go back to our main comp, Let's give it the name of main, cool, let's go back to our butterfly and turn on the motion blur switches and make sure it is turned on turn it on and as you can see we have some motion blur applied for our butterfly animation so let's go back to our main comp what we can do is we can start placing a bunch of butterflies all around so press s on your keyboard to scale down the butterfly W okay, press W to select your rotation tool and start rotating the butterflies gonna duplicate this by hitting control D and just placing the butterflies randomly and you can do this a couple of times
Okay, looking good. Let's offset these so they don't have the same animation and that they're uh, a little bit more random. So these, let's have a look. move from around just a few just so that we can get some random animation going all right let's onto all of these and to blend these better we're going to put a drop shadow for them so let's Select our drop shadow, drag it to our butterfly layer, and if we look at which direction the sun is coming, you see it's coming from the right. So our shadows are falling on the left. So if you can increase the distance so we can see our shadow, we can angle the shadows to the left. right about there should be good you can soften them so they're not that harsh just a tiny bit of soften and we're going to come go to edit copy our drop shadow select one of the other butterflies and then paste them and you can just hit control V on your keyboard to paste the rest so let's select this butterfly control V to paste it oops yeah there we go and uh, that's about it now you can use this effect for pretty much anything you want and uh, to bring this all together let's select everything go to layer pre-compose we're going to call this main final press OK and if you saw in the original we had this effect called chromatic aberration so grab an adjustment layer type in let's rename this chromatic Aberration. Type in optics, compensation, apply that to the adjustment layer. Let's drag and drop that to the adjustment layer. And we're going to come here and type in 3D glasses and apply that to our adjustment layer. And if we apply that, you can see that our image went away. To bring it back go to here and then select it. And as you can see if we go down we can select this and if we hit reverse we can increase the field and you can see we get this 3D distorted effect this lens distortion effect and uh, there you have it guys I really like the look that uh, chromatic aberration gives this it really brings it to life and uh, alright looking pretty good Now I want to show you guys, if we go back to our main comp and go to our radio waves layer, you can select it and use different masks. Let's increase the frequency, I guess, yeah. 
you can use different looks like here we have a circle and as you can see it updates so you can have a bunch of different shapes that you want to create if you want to create so if you grab our pen tool we can just draw a random mask and select it go to mask and grab the second mask if we hit play you can see it updates and updates in our main comp So you can play around and get some pretty cool looking effects. If we grab our pen tool and we create another create another random mask. As you can see if we go back it updates so that was it for this tutorial I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys learned some stuff and uh, I'll see you in the next one now I'd like to thank you guys for watching my previous two tutorials and I'm pretty curious to see what you guys came up with if you want to send me your creations please send them at coolbeans575 that's my Instagram Michaelissa that's me on Facebook and if you want to send me by email, please send them at michael.lissa95 at gmail.com. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your guys' uh, creations. So uh, I'd like to thank you. And uh, let's start.